Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Tuesday Tools. My name's Boone, and this week we're gonna take a look at Pins and Boxes, a plugin for Adobe After Effects. Now this tool really makes working with text in Adobe After Effects incredibly easy. It allows users to create dynamic motion graphics without having to write complex expressions. So if you use After Effects to create motion graphic templates for Premiere Pro users, you are really gonna want a copy of this plugin. So let's take a closer look. Okay, so I'm inside of Adobe After Effects here and I have these two text elements set up. I have my main title that says responsive and I have a little subtitle here that says graphics. Now, let's say that I wanna have a setup here to where if I edit either of these, um, the other one will react accordingly. For instance, if I change the size of my main title, I want this graphics subtitle to maintain right aligned and I want it to maintain the position just below this. So I won't have to reposition it every time. So we can do this via pins. Now let me open up the pins and boxes panel. I just need to go to file, scripts, and select pins and boxes. Now the way this is set up is really quite simple. However, you can really achieve a lot of complex results. So the idea is based around pins and boxes. So first, pins. Pins are essentially shape layers that are created and attached to a mother layer, and then you can attach other layers to those pins so they respond accordingly and stay attached to those positions. So first, I'm gonna select my main title and I can click the pins button or I can shift click it. If you wanna be more precise, you can shift click it and it'll bring up this little dialog box here. I can uh, be precise about the position and the number of pins that I wanna place, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the pins button. Now that's gonna add pins around my main title. And now you can see down here, we also have the shape layers that have been created and it tells us what pin you know each one is. If I open up the effect controls panel, you can see that there is a little pin effect here. We can change uh, manually change the location of the pin, and we can also change the appearance if I want those to be you know larger. Also, I can quickly toggle the visibility of these on and off because if I render this out right now, these shape layers are going to come out in the render. So I don't want that. I can turn off the visibility right here. And also these shape layers uh, by default when they're created, they have the shy layer activated. So if I just hit the shy button here, it's gonna hide all of those because it can get quite busy when you add pins to a number of different text elements, it can get you know kind of muddled up here. Okay, so now I have my pins, I'm gonna turn the visibility back on. And now I essentially wanna parent my subtitle layer to this specific pin. So the way I can do that is I'm gonna go grab my graphics uh, layer here, the text layer, and I'm going to grab the pick whip and I'm going to parent it to the bottom right pin. And just like that, now it's attached. Now I'm going to toggle the pins off again. If I go grab uh, the responsive main title and let's say we want to change the uh, size of this, you can see now that that subtitle is automatically uh, reacting to that. Now let's say we want to edit this specific subtitle. Now the problem is, if I change the size of this, it's gonna overlap um, you know, our top text. And that's because of where the anchor point is located. If I pull up, um, just click on this, and we look, you can see the anchor point is right at the bottom in the middle. Now I could go to paragraph, and I could right align this, so now our anchor is down here, but we still have the issue of when I change the size, it's gonna overlap. We want it to scale up um, away from this text so that we can scale it and we don't have to reposition it every time. Well, we can do that with pins and boxes by adding another anchor point element to this layer. So with this selected, I'm going to go over and I'm going to hit this A button and you see it says add anchor point controls to selected layers and you can shift click it to remove. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. So now we see it's placed a new anchor point at the top left and we can see an effect has been added, an anchor control. We can have specific controls over the location of just the X or the Y individually or both together. And I can offset that position as well. So let's just change this position. These are in percentages as well, which is perfect. Now I want that anchor point in the top right. So that's perfect. Now I'm gonna manually reposition this. I'll just go ahead and grab this layer again. Now we wanna actually align it, right align it so that it's perfectly you know, right where we want it maybe move it up a little bit. And now when I change the size of my subtitle, now you see it responds accordingly. All right, now I wanna add some background elements to these two text layers. To do that, I'm gonna use boxes. Now to add a box to an element, you have to apply it to two or more pins. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the visibility of these pins back on, 
And I'm going to go down here to the timeline and select all these pins and then just hit the box element. And now you can see there's a new box and it's constrained by these pins. Now I'm going to go up and kind of customize the design here. I'm going to change the color. I'm going to turn off the stroke and then I'm going to place it underneath my text on the timeline. And now if I click this box shape layer and look at the effect controls panel, you'll see I have a bunch of different options here. I can change the type if I want it to be a line, horizontal or vertical. I could add some margins so I can give it some breathing space here. I could scale it, move the anchor point if I'd like, offset the position. So it's very, very cool. And now if I grab the responsive text, uh, that is basically the background is going to follow. Even if I type something else in, you're going to see that that is going to automatically adjust. Very, very cool. Now I am going to do the same thing with my graphics layer here. So first I need to add pins to this. So I'm going to select it, go down here and click pins, and that will add pins to the graphics. Uh, let's see here. So now with those selected, I'm going to click on box, and then we'll uh, kind of apply the same look red with no stroke and then I'll bring this down here below graphics and I'll do the same thing with my margins I'm gonna give it like a 25 pick uh, 25 margin on all sides here and now if I grab graphics and move this around you can see that the background is going to follow as well even if I type here and retype something in, it will automatically um, uh, not only adjust that background, but it's going to stay aligned because we have uh, put that anchor point on there. Okay, now let's animate these backgrounds. First, I'm going to turn off the visibility of the pins, and let me just reposition this element ever so slightly. Move it down here, maybe. Okay, now let's say we want to do um, kind of like a wipe reveal from the background. So we want the responsive background to come up on the Y axis, and reveal the word responsive, and then we want the, the background here to wipe down on the y-axis. So to do that, I'm gonna go down to the boxes here, and we'll animate this one first. And one way we can animate this is via the effect controls panel. If you look here, I have scale. I have X and Y scale, zero to 100%. So I need to simply animate this Y scale from zero to 100. But if you look, it's animating up from the middle. So we want it to come from the top. So to do that, I'm just going to go over anchor point here. And you can see it's in the middle, so it's at 50%. So now, let's see, I need to change that to 0. And now we can see it animates from the top. So we want it to animate in from uh, one second. So I'm going to add uh, the Y scale here, 100. And I'm going to go back and change this to 0. And now let's take a look, have that animated. I'm gonna press the U key to see my keyframes. Okay, I'm gonna add some smoothing on there. Okay, there we go, that's animating on. Now let's do the same thing for the responsive box. I'm going to open up the anchor and the scale and let's scale this one down. And we actually want to come from the bottom there. So I'll set the anchor of the Y to 100 and then now let's animate this once again, 100 and zero. Now let's see. Okay, and once again, I need to uh, I need to smooth these out really quickly. Okay, change the speed there. Might need to offset these a little bit. Let's take a look. Because they're not perfectly aligned, I'm gonna have the um, bottom one come in a little bit later. Okay, that's looking good. And now to have them reveal, I simply need to duplicate them and add them as track mats. So you know what, I'm gonna turn off the visibility of all those pins. Like I said, that really helps to keep everything nice and neat. So to do that, I'm gonna quickly duplicate this box, bring it over top of my graphic, and then change the track mat to alpha mat. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. We'll duplicate this, bring it above, and change responsive text to um, alpha. And now just like that, we have this animation. And as I grab uh, this title here, I can move it around. I can, um, let's see, we wanna, let's say we wanna type in something, Manuel Antonio. 
I can type in like the name of the city, scale it down, um, and then I can come to the graphics here and I can type in uh, Costa Rica. And that's going to adjust accordingly and the animations are still going to be all good to go. Again, I'm only scratching the surface here of what this plugin can do, the real power that it has. Let me show you one other cool feature that I really like. I'm going to open up this other sequence here and I have these two graphic elements. Um, nothing's really applied to these. I'm going to grab them both and I'm going to hit the pins button, quickly make pins and I'm going to hit the box. Now the box will be created around all of the pins. Now let's say I can uh, turn off this fill and now I can go to the box and let's you know boost the margin some 25 okay and let's turn those pins off and now check this out this uh, you know we have like a little background now or a border and this border will react accordingly as I move this around so very very cool this is another really great feature and if I uh, once again if I you know do anything here if I make this bigger very, very amazing, very, very versatile. And one quick note for you AE users that are working on Mogurt files for Premiere Pro, those Premiere Pro users are not gonna need pins and boxes installed, so don't worry about that. All right, so there you have it. If you liked the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to purchase a copy of this plugin, just follow the link in the video description. And to check out more cool tools like this, you can go to my Tuesday Tools playlist on my channel and check out some other cool plugins from other creators. And be sure to subscribe to the channel because every Tuesday, I'm going to be showing you another cool tool. All right, I'll see you next week.